Welcome to Bat Shit, a frank and funny look at living with mental illness. While we'll touch on several illnesses, Bat Shit is focused on those along the spectrum of bipolar disorders. I'm your host, Adam. And I'm your other host, Brad. And we're both bipolar. So strap in and let's see how Bat Shit we really are. Spoiler alert. Pretty damn Bat Shit. I love when you whisper. (laughs) Today's topic, listener questions. Yay! So we've been really honored at the amount of feedback that we got on our show very quickly. Yeah, that we're completely blown away, honestly. We have these um, apps that go along with the um, with the program we used to host the site, and it will show us like, oh, this is how many listens you had today. This is how many listens you had over the course of seven days. And we've just been getting such amazing feedback and continued growth. And First of all, that's amazing. And second of all, it's sad because of how many people need to talk about this stuff and no one's talking about it. So yeah. so thank you all so much for listening and you know for sharing your thoughts. And what we wanted to do was recognize the fact that you have questions and if we can, maybe help provide some answers or guidance into how you might find your own answers. And we've we've written back to some of you yeah. on this. Uh, we record these episodes back to back to back way ahead of time. Yeah. So by the time you're listening to this, it may have been a while since your question came in. Right. Uh, but for you and for those of, of you out there who haven't written us yet and, and plan to, uh, we will – answer as much as we can and we'll try to do as much as we can on the podcast itself yeah we also will we won't be using names because we want to keep everybody's anonymity you know to themselves uh but we do want to let you know that you're seen and we appreciate you uh first before we even start anything here's the first one audio we are learning about yes. audio. <laughs> and we have listened to your feedback on that especially. <laughs> we, are, uh, we are so so I actually work in post production, but I don't do the post production. <laughs> I supervise the people who do the post production. So like I'm learning just as much as the rest of uh you about how like how do podcasts work? I better adjust this dial and hit this knob and how do I limit that? So And Adam and I were just talking before we started recording this about how I tend to come in like super high and energetic and loud and then slowly just kind of like drift into this little like mumbly talk <laughs> that I like to do. Like pillow talk. It's pillow talk for all of you. Pillow out there. talk with Brad. <laughs> uh, oh, Brad man. Brad does ASMR in case any of y'all are listening to us. Uh no, so yeah, we, we you know we got a new uh uh interface we got new mics where we're playing around we still don't know exactly know how we're going to be doing like the i had my larynx replaced yeah yeah it's yeah. much nicer now um <laughs> we don't know how we're going to be doing the uh yeah uh, the like uh zoom style interviews we got to teach the cl- uh, the person who's being interviewed how to record into audacity blah, 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 blah. but we hear you with the audio we're working on it that was question one yeah. that's that Brad? and honestly i'll say one of the things that has been kind of heartwarming in that regard too is that you guys have stuck with us yes. <laughs> even though the audio yeah you has... guys are listening to this and you're like what are these people they're using like tin cans and a yeah. string to... <laughs> but there's something here that keeps you listening so oh i appreciate that i i will say just to get a little like uh soft and personal here for a mm. moment pillow talk with brad <laughs> uh is um Adam and I have talked about this. We've we've had some dark episodes recently, and one of the things kind of getting us through it is all of you reaching out to us, yeah, and letting us know that this podcast has helped. It's people have reached out and said it's helped them deal with their mental illness. It's helped uh, other people realize they have a mental illness. They've they've been questioning it, and they now plan to seek professional help. Or loved ones of people who are suffering from something who have written us and say, hey, thank you. Now we actually get it. And I just – we kind of get teary-eyed with this. (laughs) I just want to to tell you how much that means to us because it's it's difficult, as you all know, to struggle with this. Yeah. And there's this kind of feeling now with this podcast that we're we're helping people and – that makes it worth it. I yeah. mean, it makes the podcast worth it. It doesn't make the bipolar worth it, no. but it makes the podcast worth it. <laughs> Nothing makes the bipolar worth it. <laughs> oh, uh, God. No, exactly. No, exactly. Scotch, Brad, scotch, 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 scotch. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So Brad has all the questions. He's mm-hmm. he's written them down on his phone like a good millennial. Um, 
Are we millennials? I think we're like yeah, oh, we're good, millennials. Good for us. Yeah. Good for us. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> question number one. Go ahead, Brad. Okay. So question number one. Um, I don't. I'm not sure this is someone who English is their native language. So okay. please don't judge. I'm just going to read it as is. We don't. I just don't know how to come out. I just now, after a really long manic stage, am truly happy with my person, and my BP is terrified of losing him because of this. Do you have any advice? I'm assuming the BP is the bipolar. Yeah. Uh, this is a tough one. I mean, I completely understand why you wouldn't want to burden someone that you just started seeing with this. Yeah. Um, I think there's a time and a place uh, for that. I, I don't know that I would. I don't. I don't know. It's a tough thing. I'm not sure that yeah. I would like first date. No, be like, hey, no, don't lead with it. I definitely <laughs> yeah, wouldn't come yeah. in hot and be like, so by the way, <laughs> hey, my name's Brad. Can I get your number? Oh, by the way, I'm mentally ill. <laughs> mentally ill. <laughs> but see, here's the other part of it, though, is that you have to be. If you're coming out of a manic state, right, which is I, I believe the the way you phrased it, and you met your person, did you meet that person in your manic state? If you met that person in your manic state, they're going to see you when you crash. They're going to see you on the other side of that manic state. And there's only so long you can hide those yeah. crashes, and there's only so long you can hide that that depression. And now I don't know if your manic energy is more than your, you know, depressive state. I, I'm not sure that, you know, this is your battle that you're going through, but something to keep in mind as you do progress, and I hope your relationship continues to evolve and be amazing is that just keep in mind they will eventually see the other side of you. So yeah. maybe not, like Brad said, on the first date, be like, hey, mentally ill, so calamari. Um, but, <laughs> may <laughs> but maybe maybe um, know yourself and know that you, when you continue to see this person, be aware if you are just seeing them in manic states and recognize that and try and not curb the behavior a little bit, but try and get them familiar with the other sides of you as well. Well, then what level of mania too? Right. Um, because, you know, I mean, we've, we've spoken before about our relationships and our friendships and whatnot that we've absolutely tanked. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I had somebody I considered my best friend in the world and it was before I was bipolar. They didn't know I was bipolar. I didn't know. And my mania kept progressively getting worse. And so to them, I just seemed like a narcissistic, crazy asshole. Mm -hmm. However, if somebody knows what you're going through, not only can they, can they tolerate that much easier, and hopefully if you have a good relationship, have sympathy and empathy for what you're going through, they'll also know that's not you. Right. And that that state will end. Yeah. You know, something that I do with my wife is she knows I'm bipolar, obviously. If I'm having a very bad depressive state or a manic state, I will just say it up straight, say to her straight up, I don't feel well. Mm -hmm. I don't feel well, like I'm sick, which I am. But it's also, if, if for instance, you're talking to this new person and you're getting along really well with them and you're in a depressive state or you're in a crazy manic state and you're supposed to have a meeting or an encounter with them and you're not, and you're in one of those two places, you can say to them, look, <coughs> I really want to see you, but I don't feel well today. Yeah. I, I feel sick, you know, and that's not a lie. That is being completely straightforward. And as they get to know you, you know, you can feel when it's right for you to reveal to them that. You know, you you may have a mental illness or you have a mental illness. Um, but I think telling them that you don't feel well is perfectly legit and fair. Mm -hmm. Because if someone were to judge you and be like, you're sick, man, you must really hate me. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah. no, no, that's not. Your me. diabetes is proof that you hate me. <laughs> yeah. Then that person's not for you. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I think I think that's the way to go with it. That, that's my advice. My yeah. advice is like, if you're in a manic state, you're in a super depressive state, tell them you don't feel well. Until you and get you know what? When you get to the point where, where you feel comfortable being like, I am bipolar, or yep. whatever it is you might have, send them resources. Yeah. Because if somebody likes you, if they're into you, yeah. and especially if, if you're already getting to the point where there's a solid foundation for a relationship, mm -hmm. they will read those resources. They will watch those yep. videos, and they will come to understand you better. You could send them like a really entertaining, funny podcast 
about bipolar. Yeah. If, not, where would you get one? If only one of those existed. Where would that come from? Ah. <laughs> Batch. <Bad> <laughs> uh no, hey, best of luck with your relationship. I, I hope it continues to grow. I hope uh they see you for who you are, which is a wonderful, amazing person. Yeah, I'll tell you another comment kind of related to this that just kind of broke my heart mm. that somebody put on one of our um uh, episodes and it was just uh, my significant other is bipolar and they're the most beautiful soul I've ever known uh, and that's all they wrote uh, and it was just wait was that Shannon? <laughs> <laughs> no if it, if it was Shannon she'd be like alright this motherfucker <laughs> this son of a bitch <laughs> oh, that's amazing. good for you good for you yeah, for, for, uh, for seeing that yeah for all partners out there who were able to do that you know that uh, thank you like thank yeah. you on the behalf of people who have amazing partners. Yeah, cuz it's it's not easy and I don't know. I mean, it's weird to talk about yourself this way. But, you know, I I feel this about myself. I feel this about Adam. I think I think when we're us, I think we we have such big hearts. Mm. And we care so much about other people. And then we're not us and we're completely self-absorbed and go through all the shit that we've talked about before. And I don't know if if it's correlation or causation. We've talked before about the amygdala being larger in the bipolar brain that governs emotions. Right. Maybe that causes us when we're in normal states to to care about people more and to have these big hearts. Or maybe sensitive people who who feel like that and think like that are more prone to develop something as a defense mechanism almost because Maybe. we we feel the the hurt around us more. I don't know. Um but like Adam said like kudos to you for being able to see past that. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. No, it's not. Yeah. It's like uh give yourself a pat on the back. You yeah. know, honestly it's so much easier to just walk away. Yeah. It's so much easier to say this is too much work. Uh I need something easier. Because God yeah. knows life is hard enough. Yeah. And I'm not going to say it's not hard to deal with. And I'm not going to say it, it's, it doesn't hurt when it happens. But if you're suffering from something, I think, I think what we have to keep in mind, and I don't have an easy time doing this either, folks, is if it is too much for someone, it's too much for them. Yeah. And that's their journey. And you know what? They weren't right for you. Right. If that's the case, they and, wouldn't have been a supportive partner in the long term. Yeah, when you would really need them, when you'd really need them, they wouldn't yeah. be able to step up. And again, I don't blame, like Brad said, we don't blame people for that. That's mm -hmm. like the, the idea of being, can can you blame someone who can't bench press 300 pounds? Or, I mean, no. e even put it this way, uh, if if you think of it uh, in terms of a physical malady, mm. if if you met someone online, for instance, sure. and they were wonderful and you had these great conversations and then you went to meet them in person and they're a paraplegic and they start telling you all the ways that you will physically have to care for them. Sure. Sure. It's a lot. That's a lot. You know? That's a lot. Um, and it doesn't, make, it doesn't make someone a horrible person for not being able to do that. Right. However, what does make someone a horrible person, and I will say this because you people will encounter them. And you need to be able to recognize that's an that was an awful person mm, <laughs> because yeah. it will help you get yeah, over yeah. it. Is that they can't see past your bipolar, right? Right. That they think that is the sum of you. Yeah, and that's not the case. Yeah. Obviously, you should know that if you're listening to this. I think you're you're already halfway or more than halfway to realizing that. Yeah. But but yeah, just I'm gonna say it again. You're more than your bipolar. We had, uh, I'm not sure where this episode will air, so this this may air before this interview does, but we had uh, Christy Wampler on recently to talk about her experiences with CPTSD. And she and I have just been kind of texting a lot since then. And um, uh, she really, she choked me up with something because I was having a hard time dealing with it. But she told me that I'm I'm not my sickness. Yeah. You know, and I have a hard time accepting that sometimes. But it's something we need to hear. We are not our sickness. It's it's like asthma. It's like diabetes. Unfortunately, it affects our behavior yeah. in ways that th those don't. But it's the same thing. Yeah. Well said, Brad. Well said, Christy. Yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't listened to that episode, or if this came out before that episode, uh, listen to that episode. Yeah, please do, because she's amazing. <laughs> she's really great. Um, okay, we have more questions. We have more. So many questions. Let me pull them up here. All right. Our next one 
Uh, I got this on Instagram. Ooh, Instagram. <laughs> See, we're on social media. We're young. Yeah, we're hip. Yeah. We just don't really do much with it. <laughs> <laughs> so if any of you out there would like to take over our social exactly. media. Exactly. <laughs> if anyone wants to man our social media accounts. Uh, or woman it. Or woman. Social. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I about to say social woman it. I'm like, no, that's not. <laughs> That's not what Brad meant. All right. That sounds like a Beyonce song. It's a social moment. Social moment. <laughs> okay, I'm not nope. continuing Yeah, that's that. a good, good look. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, hello. I found your guys' podcast yesterday and finished it by this morning. Loved it. Took me a while to find. And after I finished it, I tried looking for a new podcast to listen to, but I haven't found anything yet. You guys taught me a lot. Gave me a better understanding. I'm currently trying to figure out how I feel. It's been a problem. I just don't know. I invalidate everything I feel. But you guys telling stories and explaining feelings had me relating. I do want to talk to a professional, but speaking to my parents about that is weird. I've tried multiple times, and I just get frustrated when it doesn't go my way. So I just leave it, you know. Thank you. Yeah. um, I think the hardest thing, in my opinion, about this disease is the inability to truly verbalize how you feel. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's, it's infuriating because I remember growing up and getting like in this like really manic state and wanting to say something to my mother or my father and, and not being able, words were not coming out of my mouth. Like, I, like my energy was through the roof and I am someone who doesn't have a problem talking usually. Um, but, and my parents would be like, what is what, what, what? And I'm like, I got nothing. I, I couldn't, I literally couldn't say anything. It was easier for me to like hit a bag than it was to try and explain how I I was going to say, do you, do you get when you get in those states where like your manic brain is firing so fast mm-hmm. and your mouth can't keep up and you don't feel like you're making sense and people don't understand you? Yeah. I get so angry. So angry. It's and it's not their fault. Right. No, no, no. Of course but, not. But it's just like, why the fuck don't you get what I'm trying yeah, to well, say? Why can't you get this? And it's, it's, yeah. uh, and, and, and like my wife and I, we continue to go back and forth about this. And so I completely get what you're saying about, You've tried to talk with your parents and they and they aren't processing the way you need them to process mm-hmm. or maybe they're not picking up what you're putting down. Um, and d- I'm not sure how old your parents are. Right. Um, I'm, I'm guessing the person who wrote us is a minor. Probably. Because, because of that being a concern. Um, but the previous generation did not talk about mental health. Right. And they don't look at it the way that I was going to say the way that we do, but I mean, there's still so much stigma about mental yeah. health. The, the the way that we're trying to on this sure. podcast, yeah. at least, and the way that I'm sure most of you speak of it. But there's still a lot of stigma, and I think that I think that might be doubly so for a parent because yeah. as a parent, I could completely understand how someone wouldn't want to admit that their child had a problem. Oh, God, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I, I feel like a lot of parents will be like, oh, it's my fault. Yeah. My, I mean, when I started this podcast, my my mother, uh, n- not great at technology, my parents, but they figured out how to listen to the podcast. <laughs> oh, uh, no. They, thanks, mom and dad. Um, but my mom was called me up and she's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Not your fault. Yeah. None of this is your fault. And and you shouldn't feel bad about it. Um, I, I appreciate the sentiment like we should have identified it earlier. But let's be real, ma. Like, you didn't know. How could, I mean... Who the hell was talking about bipolar then? Right, exactly. In the 80s? Like, come on, no. Um, So I honestly think the best way to to start this conversation with your parents is to start, like Brad said, with the last question, start informing them. Like, informing them of what bipolar is. Mm -hmm. And start starting the conversation. Not even necessarily about what you feel, because that's going to be very hard for you to verbalize, like what you are feeling. And if you're invalidating your own feelings, mm-hmm. you will, whether you realize it or not, invalidate it for them. Yep. Yeah. When exactly. When you try to communicate it. Yeah. 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 You know, when you talk down about yourself to how about how you're feeling, you know, like, like you said, invalidating it. So don't be afraid to say, "Hey, there's this person," and I'm not saying this like you know, like you're you're transposing yourself onto someone else. I'm like, "Hey, you know what? You can talk about how." There are these guys that listen to on a podcast and, you know, this one, like, he can't talk about his feelings, so he has to hit a bag. Or, you know, this one, when he talks to his wife about it, he he doesn't necessarily want to look at her all the time. Like, you can talk about the things that other people are going through just to open up your parents' eyes about what the condition is. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, because there's no way you're going to truly inform your parents 
succinctly. You know, it's not mm-hmm. like a, I think that that's a frustrating thing about mental illness, right? Is it's a spectrum. So you can't just be like, look, you're sneezing, you're coughing, you have the flu. Yeah. And I can see you having the flu. Here is the medicine for the flu. And if you were to go to explain that to your parents, they're like, oh, you have the flu. Got it. You're never going to be able to do that. So <clears throat> finding examples of uh, of actions or or moments or people in the world around you that have bipolar and that are trying to verbalize it their way. Because I'll say this, talking with Brad on the podcast, he said a number of things that I have not been able to verbalize. But the way he said it, I was like, yeah, that, that's it. Exactly. So, because you know. Because I sit around in manic states and have <laughs> fake conversations with my head, <laughs> in my head to all the people I wish I could talk to that I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mental illness. Mental illness. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, that's my two cents. And I just went on a little rant there. I don't know. Uh, you know what I would add to that is if you are a minor, um, it, as it sounded like, maybe there's another adult you could speak to. Sure. Uh, maybe a guidance counselor at school, a teacher uh, who you trust, uh, someone who might be able to better talk to you about it, and maybe even act as an intermediary with your parents. Sure. If you have another relative that you're close to, an uncle or, or, mm. or someone. You, you know, as, as something else I'll recommend, um, write it down. Yeah. Like, journal. Well, you know, it's if you try to verbalize how you're feeling, you may not be able to do it, right, on the moment in the spot. But if you wake up every morning and for 10 minutes, you just kind of try and Write down how you're feeling or how you felt or, you know, this instance that you were going through. It might help you develop the vocabulary you need to talk Mm -hmm. with people about it. And I might even – so I got – one of the first things I did after I got diagnosed was I ordered a mood journal off Amazon. And while it has areas to, you know, write about your thoughts and feelings, my favorite thing Mm – is there's just this uh, these two little areas where, where you color where you're coloring yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get to I get to color dinosaurs dinosaurs um, but uh, it's like how did you feel in the AM and it's just a series of smiley faces like going from oh like the a pain chart yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah 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 to to sad to anger mm. and then in the PM and what I do you know is in addition to all the things that I'm writing down in it and whatnot is uh, uh, I circle how I felt when I got up. And I'm circling how I feel when I go to bed. And then you look at that over a week or two and you're like, my God, I've gone two weeks straight sad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's it's like that whole thing with um with dieting, too. They talk about that, right? Like yeah. if you want to try and get your diet under control, write down everything you eat. Yeah. Don't judge it. Just write it down. And then you'll be able to see trends and patterns and yeah. maybe start to affect that. You know? And that might be something you can show to your parents. Yeah. It's be like, look, I got this thing. I've been tracking my moods. I want to show you. How many days in a row? Right. I am just miserable. Right. And and you can preface that by saying, like, this has nothing to do with you guys. This has nothing to do with what you say or how you are. This is just how I'm feeling at this moment. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, because I think a lot of people who are, you know, like going back to what my mother said, like my mother didn't feel attacked, but my mother felt at fault. And that's not the case. Yeah. It's not the case. So I, I think that's a great – the mood journal is amazing. I think writing down how you feel is amazing. Mm-hmm. And maybe help you to develop this vocabulary you need. Yeah, yeah. And we've touched on this in other episodes. I think we talked about it a lot in our first episode. You tend to, as you're talking about invalidating your feelings, try to find any other reason mm. that you're feeling these this way yep. or that you're having these thoughts. Um, And not only – is that going to lead you to invalidate your feelings? Which is perfectly normal. That's part sure. of this journey. Yeah, 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 yeah. But your parents are going to be doing the same thing. They're going to yeah. try to find any other reason. Like, you just need more sunshine. Just you get up to, earlier, you know? Yeah, maybe start a sport. Cold shower. Yeah. yeah. There's any number. So, yeah. Um, we see you. We witness you. That's that's tough. Um, even if you can't necessarily say what you want to say to your parents... I'm sure they love you, and I'm sure they are trying to listen. So just keep trying. Yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. Make them listen to this episode. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then they'll be like, these guys have filthy mouths. Exactly. Why are you listening to this? <laughs> 
They have how many listens? Why? (laughs) Thanks for listening. Help us continue the conversation. Leave us a comment with your thoughts, experiences, or questions about mental health. Every opinion and viewpoint is valid. Just don't be a dick. So here's our next one. Okay. Hi. I'm binging your podcast today because it is fantastic. Oh. And that's it. Thank you. That's no, it. No, that's no. It. And we're out. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay. I'm married to a wonderful man who had a really shit, horrible two years, much like you're describing. Now diagnosed and way more stable. I love the episode about relationships and that you give credit to your wives for pushing and accepting. This is a big deal. Often much like addiction, no one checks in on us, and we are expected to just hold it all together while you all sabotage. Yep. Please ask them to join you for an episode. I would love to hear their story. Uh, I responded to her, and then she said, uh, thank you for this work. I felt so alone battling for him. Felt like the only one who was unwilling to accept that he was just a narcissistic asshole. (laughs) Friends, doctors, therapists, constantly insisting it was a mask and he needed help. I have another friend in it right now Mm. who's also listening. She feels so helpless, like watching a slow suicide through manic sabotage. There's a Facebook group of wives supporting bipolar spouses. The stories are also similar. It's heartbreaking. Thank you for being willing to tell it. It does change people's perception when you are out with it, which makes the struggle very lonely, like I was protecting his image while he self-destructed. Please keep sharing. Um, so first of all, I want to know the name of that awesome Facebook group, or I mean, maybe it's like uh, Maggie's Illuminati group that yeah, we can't yeah. join. But you know, I feel like I might have joined it. I think it's just, <laughs> yeah, I think it might just be called Bipolar Spouses. Oh I, really? I lurk. Oh, yeah. you're a lurker. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, um, is she talking about me online? <laughs> <laughs> the her. The her. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's tough. It's tough for the spouse. I mean, we we talked on that that. Other question about loving someone for their bipolar and whether the bipolar person should tell them and et cetera. But with this one, I think, you know, looking at the other side, how hard it is. Because, again, most of most of the resources, most of the recovery and treatment advice focus on the person suffering from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the people in their lives are getting it so much worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I sometimes feel like it's harder for the people who know. Because you can't just write them off as a narcissistic asshole. Yeah. God, again, it'd be so much easier if you could, right? right. It'd be so right. much easier if you could just be like, nope. You'd be like, this lying sack of shit. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out my door. Yeah. But yeah. when you know that that's not them, and you see who they really are. Yeah, you see those moments, those like, you know, those ugh, those glimmers in the dark. It's, mm-hmm. God, that's so frustrating. And, you know, good for you for being that su- supportive partner that I'm sure your partner needs. I would say something that doesn't get talked about a lot, but I would highly recommend, is any of you out there who who have a spouse or a close loved one who's dealing with this and you're part of their care and you're getting a brunt of this. Mm. And like she said, feeling like you're having to defend them to other people constantly. Right. You, you also would benefit from therapy. Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I honestly think anybody would benefit from therapy, but no, I completely, I completely, yeah, Yeah. I agree with you. You're going through a lot. Right. And obviously, you know, Adam and I are both bipolar. Obviously the show we're focusing on things from the perspective of the person who's mentally ill, but but you guys are going through some shit, yeah. And and you deserve to be seen, yeah. And you deserve to be heard, yeah. And and treated, and like, treated. You have yeah. to be treated too, because if you live with <clears throat> these people and uh, these people being us for an extended period of time, y- you will get sick too. I'm not talking about you're going to get bipolar. It's not you can't transmit it. Um, but you know your your stress level is going to go up. Your your anxiety is going to go up. Yeah. Um, and there's so many people who already have undiagnosed mental illness. Sure. If you're, say, undiagnosed with depression Ooh. and you're having to deal with someone like us. Ooh. Good yeah. God, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's it's it's going to be rough. Yeah. I, I, finding a, like, supportive partners group online, like, in Facebook, that's amazing. Um, if you can find... And I think people are getting more comfortable with talking about mental health. But that's the other tricky thing. You know, I was... I have a friend... Whose uh, whose partner is bipolar, and the other night 
uh, we were out uh, hanging out, having drinks with another bunch of people. And one of the people in that group, they had a partner that was bipolar. And at the end of the night, I was like, oh, did you talk with so-and-so because you both have bipolar partners? And they were like, eh, I didn't know because I didn't want to. Like, is that my place to reveal that my partner has bipolar? Like, where right. is that? And I, that's that's tricky too, right? Because if you're looking for a support system, but maybe, you know, your partner's not comfortable with you talking about it. Like, it, it's just this quagmire of crap you guys can get dragged down into. And yeah, that's tough. That's really, really tough. And it compounds because right. the person in your life who has a mental illness sees that. Yeah. And they appreciate you and they love you. And they also feel guilty as shit. Oh, so fucking that guilty. That you have to deal with that. So guilty. And then that that will manifest in depression, which then bounces right back on you and it just becomes a cycle. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. It's mm-hmm. terrible. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Uh, this with your friend who is also listening, which is awesome. Um, and I'm glad it's helping. I- I'm glad it's kind of, you know, peeling back the uh the curtain a little bit to let you see, you know, the wizard. Are we wizards? Is the we're the Wizard of Oz in this case? Is that uh, I might have messed up this metaphor. No, because then we would be we'd be fake. Oh. We wouldn't actually have bipolar. We'd oh, be not- pretending. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is all just a cash grab, yeah, guys. Yeah. This is all a big that, uh, cash grab. That two dollars and fourteen cents <laughs> we've made off Spotify so far. <laughs> Suckers! Oh, my God, <laughs> and they never heard from them again. <laughs> Ran off to Mexico with their twelve sixteen. Oh my God! Um, oh. Awesome. Yeah, but, it's uh, you know, like we said at the top, we appreciate all of you listening, and we appreciate you reaching out. Yeah, and this is going to be a recurring type of episode. Yes, yes. So if you have resources that you want to share. With the the community that's listening, please send them to us. Like, yeah. if you want to send the name of that Facebook Facebook group, or if there's a um, uh, a resource that you find, like um, you know, a particular uh, I don't know, uh, another podcast, even yeah, that, that like that handles this well, that you might get, you feel that other people might get something from listening to. Please mm-hmm. send it to us. We'll share it on another one of these. Uh, Another one of these. Yeah. Um, and like we said, we're not great at social media, but yes. <laughs> uh, we do have a batshit Facebook group. We do. And, and a YouTube page. Yeah, we have is, YouTube. Which I'm going to tell you, the only reason we have it is so we can post it. Uh, like, we, I just take the image of batshit, and I put the audio under it, and that's the video. Yeah. Like, it's not fancy. <laughs> it's just to get it out there on, yeah. like, the Google Analytics crap so people can find it and <laughs> listen to it. Yeah, maybe maybe one day we'll actually film ourselves. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we tried to oh the first God. couple episodes. Yeah, we did. Like I, got... I had conjunctivitis, <laughs> and my <laughs> eye was swollen shut, and I just I looked like somebody had just like beat me with a crowbar. I had, so I like wore an eye patch over. It. <laughs> like... Meanwhile, I've got this tiny ass house that we record in. So like any movement that we make, we're like knocking the camera one <laughs> yeah. way or smacking the light the other way, yeah. and yeah, it was just it was a scene, know. man. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't, <laughs> wasn't great. It wasn't you know whatever. But yeah, you can find us our, our personal accounts to Facebook, uh, yeah. Twitter. Uh, yeah, there, there's a bad shit Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, yeah, you can comment on the episodes. There's yeah. a little link um, on episodes, and nobody's taken advantage of this yet. So please do, where mm. you can leave us voice messages. Oh yeah, leave us a voice message. That's cool. Yeah, we'd we'd totally play that on the podcast. Yeah, and, we get to. Uh, oh, and that'd be awesome. It's like we're having a conversation with you. Yeah, that'd be amazing. That would be good. I like that. Maybe maybe one day we'll have uh, live call in. <laughs> Can you do that on a podcast? I get. I don't know. <laughs> You'd have to live stream it. I like, guess, that's basically but, yeah. that's basically a radio show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was talking to my, my wife the other day, and she's like, on TikTok, there was this like, you know, eighteen year old girl who was like, why can't there just be one phone in the house that everyone <laughs> could use? And I'm like, ah, god damn it, you, <laughs> god damn you. Every everything circles back around. <laughs> That'll be the thing 40 years from now. Kids will be like, man, like, I wish you could drive your car instead of it driving right. itself. <laughs> We're just sitting there on Why our isn't that a thing? On our porch, just kind of waving our hands. <laughs> you uh, young whippersnappers. You kids, get off your lawn with your hoverboards. <laughs> you don't know what it was like to be bipolar in my day. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. We love you all. We love you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>